Hi, uh, my name is Manu and I'm a faculty at Stanford. We are on Stanford campus and I am a physicist who studies biology. So imagine uh, if you just walk outside your classroom and you're out in a place like this, you see uh, all these life forms around you. I could go pick up a little piece of dirt, for example, or I have this little dirt in hand. But what this is filled with are tiny, tiny, tiny microscopic life forms that you don't even get to see by just your naked eye. But then you take a sample like that, bring it to the lab, put it under many different types of microscopes, and you realize that the fundamental unit of all these things that are made, it's filled with microscopic life forms of diversity that we actually don't even begin to understand yet. There are so many different types of tiny life forms that we call bacteria that are actually right in, in this pack of dirt. We can't even tell you how many species of bacteria there are because there are so many. If you were to think about yourself, there are more bacterial cells in you than your own cells. Then who are you? There's more bacteria than uh, what you think you are. And it's the fact that out, without them, we won't even exist. We won't actually survive because now we have evolved so directly with them. What makes you wonder when you think about this, if you are more bacteria than your own number of cells, then is bacteria a bad thing? Is it your enemy? Or is it a good thing? It's your friend. And the answer is very complex. We are a community of cells, and that community of cells forms who we are, and you have to treat that community with respect. Your body provides for a lot of things, environmental niches that these bacteria can actually live and survive in, and at that same time, sometimes that niche gets overgrown by some foreign bacteria, and that is what we call diseases. So I just picked up some sand and mud, and I have bacteria all over my hand. Even before, if I shed my hand, I still have bacteria. I might wash it with water, I might still have bacteria. And one of the things that is fascinating about this is small life forms have figured out how to live in very extreme environments all the way to inside of your gut, which can be very acidic sometimes when you're eating food, all the way to the water that's around us, all the way to plants and animals. So it's very hard to figure out where does this boundary end, where they can and cannot live. And it's an open question to really discover environments that have not been taken over by this life form. Actually, if you were to think about it, the person who discovered bacteria was Leeuwenhoek. He was also an inventor by himself, and the only reason he was able to discover bacteria is he invented a very simple type of a microscope. And the first time he discovered uh, these tiny little life forms, he gave them a name. He called them animalcules, because they were like tiny molecules, but they behaved like animal. They have a little whip and a tail, that they use to swim through. They move very, very fast through this fluid and they whip that tail to go from one place and turn around and then go the other place. They're very complex behaviors. And when he discovered this, nobody believed him. And it was fascinating over the years, he really had to make a lot of effort to prove to people that there is invisible life form. And unfortunately, we are still in that time that you really have to share this knowledge or the tools to really be able to see whether these life forms that are invisible to you in a daily life actually exist or not. A beautiful thing about bacteria is its shape. There are all different types. There are really a bacteria that looks like a comma. There is a bacteria that look like a curly bracket. There's a bacteria that looks like a corkscrew opener. There's all these different shapes. There's a bacteria that looks like a square, a circle. This is also when we are detecting for bacteria for different diseases, we look for their shape. Another fascinating thing when you start thinking about bacteria is when you let them divide, they go. Uh, e. coli, a common bacteria, will divide every 20 minutes. Think about making all the parts that make you and then double it every 20 minutes. And very soon, one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes eight, eight becomes 16, and you keep on going very quickly. You have the entire planet that will be covered with that bacteria. Many diseases have pathogens or bad organisms that cause that. And so a doctor's job is when you walk in is to really try to understand what is foreign that's causing something like this. And not all diseases are caused by this, 
but there are many, many, many diseases that have known cause foreign bacteria as agents. Many of the drugs that you commonly take are called antibiotics. They are designed to kill bacteria. And we are running out of those drugs. We are running out of our creativity to make new drugs because we've been using them for so many years. So very soon, we will not have any new weapons against bacteria. And what we need is for you to figure out how you're going to fight against these bad organisms that will make lots and lots of people sick. I wish you an exciting lesson and play with what you find and always keep your eyes open.